Today I'm going to begin making a hopefully exquisite stiletto sea monster dagger. Having drawn inspiration from this book and this fabulous 16th century handle. This wouldn't be possible without the support of NordVPN. You can get a huge discount off a two year plan at nordvpn.com forward slash forge. I've been feeling a great yearning for a challenge in the workshop that is going to grip me and keep me focused, push me hard against the barriers of my comfort zone and allow me to develop as a craftsman. This is a book of fabulous images from one of my favorite museums. And that is the Wallace Collection. They've got an incredible arms and armor exhibit. I've now been there several times, and I've been trying to look to the past for inspiration for the challenge that I could set myself next. It's got me particularly interested in trying to do more carved ornamentation. And after a few days of different sketches and looking for inspiration, I decided I want to incorporate this portion of this wheel lock spanner handle from the 1500s for the handle of a lovely and delicate stiletto-esque dagger. We're gonna be using 1080 steel for the blade, but first we're gonna draw it out to scale. So we're gonna cut the profile out. We've ground it down to our scribe lines and we're getting things close. You might be asking yourself, hey Alec, that's not actually close. Look how much thicker it is at the tip than the final piece. Well, the reason for that is if in heat treat this blade picks up a warp that way, it's gonna be difficult for us to straighten, but we would then be able to grind it down to straight. So a little extra thickness at the tip is a little handy. This piece is gonna have two bevels and a fuller ground into it, but due to the thinness and length of it, I think I wanna save both of those steps for after heat treat, which does sound ridiculous. Why would you try and grind a fuller after heat treat? I don't know, but my gut tells me the risk of warpage is such that we wanna do it later. A heat treating oven isn't wired up, so we're gonna heat treat it in the next episode, but for now, it feels like it's about time to start working on some of our other components. What do you reckon, Jimmy? We start on the guard or do we start on the handle? Guard. You think guard? Guard, on guard. Blade up is guard, blade down is handle. Ready? You missed it. It wasn't a very good flick, was it? <laughs> nope, there we go, we're working on the guard. You know you're making art when it's decided by the flip of a coin. Our guard is roughed in, profile is set. And what I want to do next is begin roughing in the profile of our carved handle. Something that I think is gonna be really interesting with this project is to make it really exquisite, but also use for most of the project relatively simple materials. Steel for this intricate carved handle is gonna give us huge difficulties because it's gonna be extremely difficult to work, but it's also a humble material. It's a bit of bar that's in a steel rack and I want to turn it into something fabulous. I want this project to be fabulous, not just for the materials used, but for how we're able to manipulate and transform them into something fabulous. I think there's gonna be something cool about taking a simple humble metal like steel and turning it into a glorious work of art, if possible. I also might screw it up, in which case it won't be a work of art.
back end of our handle, turn down on the leg. We're going to do a little machining sacrilege by using the angle driver on here. Smooth it all out. Oh, yes. Ah. All right. And flip it around. Got to part off this front section, drill a hole, and then turn down the front. We roughed it in on the lathe. And this part you're looking at here is going to be the largest challenge of this entire build as we carve, I guess, four sea monsters into it. I've picked a very non-carving friendly material to do this carving out of, and I hope it pays off in a really spectacular piece. That is the goal, that's the plan, and it's only thanks to sponsors like NordVPN for supporting us as we do it. Nord is a virtual private network. This means that they have over 6,000 servers in over 60 countries that act as intermediaries between you and the websites you browse and encrypting the data that goes between you and them. This encryption is incredibly important if you don't want your internet service provider or other people's spying on your online activity or if you want to better protect your data from hackers. But a further reason I absolutely love using NordVPN is for the geographical freedom it gives me because your internet experience is different depending on where you're browsing from. I'm running a business that's based in the US and a business that's based in the UK so I love that in NordVPN's handy dandy app for iOS, Android, Mac and PC with the tap of a button I can switch between browsing from the US and the UK. And this is also fantastic if you want to stream content that's blocked or not available in your country so you can get a huge discount off a two-year plan of NordVPN and get protected while you're browsing the internet by going to nordvpn.com forward slash forge and using code forge at checkout. Check them out. Thank you all for watching. I can't wait to share with you the journey of this project. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.